Okay, let's talk about the femur and answer the questions, what is the femur, what are its primary bony landmarks, and what are some reasons to learn about them? Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Morton and I'm the noted anatomist. So to begin, the femur is the principal bone of the thigh because there's the femur and in Latin that means thigh, hence the name. And some of the parts we're going to learn about the femur, we're going to show them on this anterior view and posterior view of the femur on the right side. So to begin with, this proximal dome-shaped structure is called the head of the femur. And the head of the femur articulates with the acetabulum of the os coxa to form our synovial hip joint. Next, we have this little divot proximally on the head of the femur. That's the fovea capitis. And that's where the round ligament or ligamentum teres of the femur attaches. Next, we have this neck which is at the bottom of the head, and the neck of the femur makes this about a 125 degree angle with the shaft of the femur. And that's where a lot of the forces are transmitted of weight down from the trunk down into the thigh. Next, we have this big bony prominence on the proximal and posterior part. It's called the greater trochanter. We see it on both the anterior and posterior sides of the femur. Big for muscle attachments. So there's a greater trochanter like our gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, piriformis, superior and inferior gemellus muscles, obturator internus. And then from the front, the obturator externus courses behind the neck and attaches to the greater trochanter. So as you can see in this picture from Gray's Anatomy, approximately on that greater trochanter, lots of muscles attached to it. Now smaller is the lesser trochanter. And we see both here. And the lesser trochanter is where the psoas major and iliacus, as they course below the inguinal ligament, become the iliopsoas muscles, and that's what attaches to the lesser trochanter. Now, we have this line right there that goes between the greater and lesser tubercles. So it's called the intertrochanteric line. And it, this line, which is shown right there in orange, is one of the attachments to the anterior part of the joint capsule of the hip joint. Now, if we then do the right anterior to the right posterior part, we see this ridge or crest that is between the greater and lesser trochanter, so they call it the intertrochanteric crest. Also an attachment for the posterior part of the joint capsule, but it also serves as an attachment for the quadratus femoris that courses from the ischium to the intertrochanteric crest. Now we have this little bumper swelling where the gluteus maximus attaches. We call it the gluteal tuberosity. And this illustration does not do a good job. So there is a photograph and you can see a much better tuberosity there on the back. And there's a gluteus maximus and there is superimposed the gluteal tuberosity where the gluteus maximus attaches. The rest of the maximus goes to the IT band. Then we have this line all on the back of the femur. It's called the linea line aspera rough line again there is a the linea aspera on a photograph to see it uh, more prominently that's where attachments for the adductor longus brevis and magnus and the vastus intermediate uh, the vastus lateralis and medialis attach and the short head of the biceps femoris and you can see those uh, the red uh, outlines show their attachments of muscles to the linea aspera right there now there is a condyle, and we call it the medial condyle, and there is a condyle, we'll call it the lateral condyle. And these are two condyles, those femoral condyles articulate with the condyles of the tibia. And the femoral and tibial condyles are going to make a hinge joint for flexion and extension of the knee joint. Um, now, between the two condyles, we have a notch, we call it the intercondylar notch. And on the femur, that's where attachments of the um, ACL and PCL occur. So there's that intercondylar notch, and there's the ACL and the PCL, and then they attach to the intercondylar eminence on the tibia. Okay, so now we're going to see how we, we're going to pivot. So we're now seeing the anterior view of the femur on the right side. And there's this bony prominence uh, on the medial distal part of the femur. It's called the adductor tubercle. And so there's our adductor magnus in green, like lime green or jello. I don't know why jello. It's green. And there you see attachment to the adductor magnus to the adductor tubercle. And so there's also attachment on the linea aspirin. Between that is this space called the adductor hiatus. That's where the femoral artery and vein traverse to get to the popliteal fossa to become the popliteal artery and vein. Um, now there is this, um, above the medial condyle is this other condyle. So they call it the medial epicondyle, above the medial condyle. And 
So when you look at an anterior view of the knee on the right side, there's the medial collateral ligament, also called the tibial collateral ligament. It attaches to that medial epicondyle. And then we also have here a lateral epicondyle, which um, looking at the same picture, you can see this lateral epicondyle in yellow, also called the fibular collateral ligament. It attaches to that lateral epicondyle. Now, if we zoom in, there's a surface on the distal part of the femur on the front, and that's where the patella sits. So it's called the patellar surface. Now, the patella is the largest sesamoid bone in the body, and it forms within the tendon of the quadriceps femoris muscle group. And there's the patella and the quads are on top, and so the patella's in that, and then that tendon inserts on the tibial tuberosity um, of the tibia. And that, my friends, is the femur in a nutshell. Mm-hmm. <laughs>